they're pretty much done with it. They just have to weld a little like eye onto it so that we can tie off the anchors. Last time on Adventure Drift, while waiting in the boatyard, we finished up a shelving project in our lockers, practicing our fiberglassing skills. Then, took some time to wander the boatyard and take in the big squid processing operation that happened nearly every morning. Up in the boatyard, we found a boat that had had a much worse day than us, dragging anchor out at Santa Cruz Island, reminding us how lucky we were. After spending over five weeks in the boatyard, we were feeling a bit cooped up, very restless, and couldn't wait to get out of the harbor and back in the sea. We were so close to being done, but we're waiting for the team at the boatyard to wrap up a few loose ends, squeezing in some time for us between commercial clients before we could take off for good. With repairs taking double the expected time and the biggest part of our costs is the labor, uh, we're well over our $7,000 budget. However, lucky for us, the boatyard agreed to honor the original quote of 7,000. And although it's taken a long time to get the repairs done, they've done a really good job designing, engineering, and really thinking through every scenario to make sure it's a well-functioning piece of equipment on the boat. Now that the bowsprit was bedded down and nearly complete, it came time for us to reattach the forestay. Since they are already way over budget on labor, we volunteered to help reattach our forestay, which we had removed five and a half weeks ago. Little did we know what a challenge this would be. We loosened the backstay as far as we safely could and also eased the tension on the shrouds, hoping that this would give us enough play to pull the mast slightly forward and easily slide the pin back through the forestay. Well, it didn't work out as easily as we had hoped. We ended up recruiting the help of several of the guys, and even with all of us pushing and pulling, we still couldn't get it. Since pushing and pulling didn't seem to be working, we put to use some tools, line, knots, and a block and tackle. Eventually, we were able to pull the sail, align the holes, and get the pin back in. With the weekend closing in, we're still waiting on our final attachment points for us to be able to lash down our anchors on the bowsprit, and we didn't have that done yet. So with two days left to kill, we got up to some more projects of our own on Varuna, and also started to get her all ship shape and ready to sail again. Since we now have two anchors up front, we now have a secondary anchor road to go along with it. I just got a thimble and spliced that on there. So now I need the shackle. So you need to shackle that to our anchor chain and this little splice I did right here will be responsible for holding our boat. So hopefully I did a good job. So this eye in here, this piece of metal, will keep the shackle from shaping on the rope and wearing it through. Make it nice and sturdy. There we go. And then we'll just add some seizing wire here so this can't come unscrewed. And that's our secondary anchor road. We have this is 5 16 of the high test chain, 5 8 inch road. Should be good to go. So right now we have it in this melt crate which is really nice and sturdy but also a little bit bulky and we don't have a great place to store a square hard box like this. So I'm going to sew a little bag for it. This is our stern anchor road. So I'm going to sew something kind of like that, but for all of that.
Before leaving Portland last spring, we found a great industrial sewing supply store where we were able to pick up some scrap pieces of canvas and umbrella, along with UV thread and other materials that will be helpful for projects and repairs on board. material that was not fun to sew through but got it done. Now it has a little handle on it, drawstring. So we got 20 feet of chain and about 175 feet of road and just have to put it in the bag now so it's easier to store than being in a crate. The bottom falls out? Nope, it doesn't fall out. Nice work. Alright, done? Done. Project complete. While I went to make yet another visit to the great little Chandlery in Ventura, Ty worked on giving Varuna a good washdown. The weeks in the dirty boatyard and the crew working on her had left her pretty filthy and grimy and in need of a good scrub. With the Santa Ana winds blowing, it was hot and windy in the boatyard, but we were eager to get all the pieces back together on board and Varuna ready to sail again. Show us what happened. Oh, we were, so we're really smart. We decided it would be good to tie up the Genoa sheets that aren't on there in this like blowing 20 probably higher gusts here in the harbor. So as we're trying to tie them on, a big gust came and we have blisters all over. We got one there, there, a couple there, there, there. And it really, really burns. First aid for Hillary. First aid, let's see. All right, burns and scalds. Immerse burnt, burnt area in cold water that. or the sea for at least 15 minutes to stop any continuing heat damage. I don't know if you did it for 15 minutes. No, I didn't. Rope burns, if severe, require the same treatment as for other burns. It's a pretty good book we picked up. Um, basic, but it's got the stuff you would want to see, you know. It's all tabbed down here. Fractures, brains, drownings, uh, stuff that's probably important being at sea. A few weeks ago, while we were out driving around LA, we had picked up a little dinghy anchor from Makara. With time to kill, I got around to splicing some line onto it. And we're looking forward to using this for some fishing and snorkeling from Makara. While Varuna was getting pushed and pulled around to swing her nose in towards the dock for the guys to work on the bowsprit, 
Apparently, a few too many hands had pulled on the lower starboard lifeline, breaking it free of the fitting. I headed over to West Marine to get a new fitting and recrimp it onto the wire. So finally, our last weekend in the boatyard came and went, and on Monday the team came in, finished up drilling a couple holes and adding some shackles, and then we were finally free from the boatyard. Just left the boatyard. It's really exciting to get out of there. Now we're in the ocean, which is pretty exciting. It's like eight something in the morning and already really hot. And it looks beautiful, but there's not much wind. So I we'll hope we'll get some wind in a bit here and sail them back out to the islands. It's time to pick up. I feel a good breeze. We should yeah. pick the sails up. We should, yeah. weeks in the boatyard had left its mark on Varuna. When we pulled in our fenders after leaving the harbor, we found a garden growing on the bottom of them. Look at that. Ugh. We had been planning to give Varuna's underside a good clean upon reaching the islands, but after seeing the growth on the fenders and watching our slow speed, even with the motor running, we realized we couldn't wait if we wanted to reach Santa Cruz before dark. It's got like little tiny particles all over it. Mm. I might need a. Got a knife? Can you give me? Back on our way to the islands. Yeah, there's no wind though, which kind of sucks, but... Yeah, so as you can hear in the background, uh, I've got the motor running most of the day. We've been on and off trying to sail if we can. Had this finicker up for a while. And yeah. We made some ground with that. We did, and then just fluky winds up and down, really the best we got. I think we got about 11 or 12 knots there at one point. Yeah, but now it's back down to like four. Yeah.
Upon reaching Santa Cruz, it was time to drop our new anchor for the very first time. Okay, that should be on the bottom. While we were happy with our 33 pound Bruce, we wanted something a bit larger and decided on a 44 pound Rockna. Okay, that's 150. This anchor is known for its holding power and ability to quickly reset on the seabed floor and will help give us a good night's sleep while on the hook. Okay. Even though it hadn't been a great sailing day, we were still so happy to be back out in a beautiful anchorage away from the boatyard. So we're sitting here trying to fix our alternator. I think we think there's a problem with the alternator. Getting like a low like a voltage warning. Our tack our tack meter's not maintaining, so it's dropping down. The RPMs is dropping down. It'll like go up for a second and then it goes back down to zero. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're not getting a full charge, we're not getting up to 14 and a half volts or anything. I've deduced <laughs> that it is the alternator belt, hopefully. Yeah, just... we're hoping it's just the belt and yeah, the belt looks okay from what I can see, but I think it's loose. Um, it should be like a half an inch depression. I think we're getting probably closer to an inch. The problem I'm having is I need to find how to tighten the alternator. So I can see the, as they call it, the link adjusting bolt. But I know there's other bolts that I need to loosen as well. And there's flies everywhere. There's a lot oh of flies God. today. There's Don't like probably way. 50 flies on the boat with us. So, here's the adjuster bolt. All right, I can see that. I know where that is. That's basic. Well, the engine is stopped, loosen the support bolts and the link adjusting bolt. Oh, I get it. But why doesn't anything show me where the bloody link adjusting bolt is or the support bolts? So, uh, I can try and find it down in the compartment. And, of course, there's no wind today either. And right when we pulled out of the anchorage, there was actually some pretty good wind. And then, all of a sudden, it went down to, like, one to two knots. Alright, so there's the, there's the alternator. Here's the link adjuster bolt. Right, that's easy to find. But, so I push down here. That's quite a bit of play. But I can't find the uh, support bolts. Is that it back there, maybe? There's no bolt that I can see. Alright, you, you got time to try and hand me some tools? Sure. We're not doing anything up here. Bring the wrenches up and the spinners. Engine is running. I'm ready to get out of here. Pretty easy. I guess most people probably know that, that it uh, wasn't too hard to tighten the alternator where our engine is and being in a boat with tiny places. So our engine is right under here. It's a pretty cramped space to get into to try and trying to get the leverage. Um, Hillary thinks she may have heard another beep before, so we may need to redo that again. But at the moment, we're looking good. All right, I'm getting out. It's time to close this up. So we have the bolt all pulled apart. Uh, I had to go back down the locker two more times. Thought we fixed it, and then it started beeping again. So we went back down to tighten it again, and it was still beeping. So we decided to change the belt. And our spare parts are down in this cubby back here, underneath all of our dry goods. We had to pull all of our dry goods out and dig through the spare parts, but we've got a new belt on there and it seems to be working. Fingers crossed, it keeps working. Yeah, we're just running it in idle right now, like a thousand RPMs. 
you're getting between 14.35 and 14.45 volts, so it's a good sign, I think. Feeding frenzy of sea lions. I don't know if you can see this. I think we're in their way. You know, we're trying to do some engine work here. Look at this. It's crazy. Surrounded. I think he didn't realize there's a boat in his path. Look at that. Look at that chop they're creating. I know. Hear the waves they're making? Tip of Santa Cruz, I think. And like that, they disappeared underwater. After several hours of working on the engine and very little wind to sail in, we made our way around the northwest corner of Santa Cruz, back to the very first place we made landfall in California after leaving Oregon in Forney's Cove. To our surprise, we found ourselves in the company of some friends that we had been expecting to cross paths with very soon. <laughs> We're in a proper dinghy, so that's all right. I love it. Ah, oh, that's fun. That does look good back there, though. That's nice. Yeah, we don't get to see our own boat from like a fast we often. We're like rowing, We're too busy paying attention to other stuff. So. First time ever even on a catamaran. Oh, Me too, actually, yeah. yeah. So come back and join us next week. We go out exploring with Scott and Lori on Muskoka from off the starboard hull. And if you enjoyed this video and you're happy to see us back out on the water, we'd love it if you give us a thumbs up. And a really big thanks to all of our patrons and our subscribers. Uh, if you want to check out more of either of those, the links are right beside us here. And please leave us your comments below. We love to read them. And until next time, cheers. Hey guys, bye. Bye. Remove loose clothing. All right, Hillary, you have to remove all of your loose clothing right now. What if it's tight clothing? Hmm. Do not pull clothing which is stuck to the skin. Well, we're both sweaty, so it's probably stuck to the skin. We left the boatyard. Exciting. We're gonna fly over there now. Peace out.